good evening. Uh, I, we started off the year with um, looking at the eighth graders, and we took their um, Mexico standard based assessment test scores and teacher recommendation from the eighth grade. And we focused mainly on the kids that are at beginning level, because you have beginning level, nearing proficient, proficient, and, and then advanced. And so we decided to narrow it down to that level. Um, got those kids in and tested, and it's when I first thought, you know, how is this going to work? Is it going to be, you know, real quick? Am I going to see improvement, you know, automatically or what? And so what I'm really excited about is we started at the end of well, mid-September with these kids, and with the language program, that uh, focuses on reading, writing, um, note-taking, grammar, it's just a whole language-based program. And then we were lucky to get the Taylor reading, which that's a computer-based program, and the kids, um, it sets them up for their reading speed. And it starts out where they do a drill, and then they do a guided reading, and they do an independent reading. And the main purpose of that is to get their reading speed up. And if their reading speed is up, then their reading comprehension goes up. So, um, go ahead and we'll go to the next one. This is what I noticed, um, what, and I, I couldn't do it per kid, so I, what I did was I did an average for all my students. And in October, when they did the first initial test, um, they were reading at about 162 words a minute, which that's probably at about a fifth grade reading level. And what we want to get them to is between 300 and 400 words a minute. And I was reading somewhere that a, an average college student reads between 250 and 350 words a minute. A good college student reads between reads about 500 words a minute. And there's kids that even can read 1,000 words a minute. So my kids right now, uh, these at-risk students, are about 162 words a minute. When we tested at the beginning of December, they are already up to 203 words a minute. And that's just in three months' time. Um, and then I also, I wanted to throw this at you. Down here at the bottom, a lot of the kids that I have in class are uh, a lot of your behavior problems. They're kids that have been suspended quite a bit. They're kids that have attendance problems. And so uh, this program has been great for them. I, I have a lot of kids that come, that come to class. They're real excited to be there because they're seeing success. And so um, what I did is I have a handful of kids that really have missed a lot because of suspensions or, or attendance or whatever. So I took those handful of kids out, and that's where my number, the 167, and then um, the 219 words a minute that we're up to right now, in, in, like I said, in three months. And this one little girl, the other day I was so excited, and she had been suspended for nine days for a fight. And I brought her score up, and I couldn't believe. She started off at 139 words a minute, and she's already up to 267 words a minute. So uh, the program is really working. The kids are really excited. They're seeing success. And um, one, uh, one other slide I think I have on here. This is, uh, is it from Mrs. Holmes? It's from Miranda Holmes. This is from the special ed uh, department. And this is kind of a setup of what I see when I bring up a kid's um, report. You have your, it shows their initial reading level. And in my class, a lot of the kids were at a fourth and fifth grade reading level. and. Um, and it talks about their reading rate, and then, like, this particular kid, I think she said, was after 10 sessions. So they've done it, like, 10, 10 days, basically. And they started off at a level of 5.0, and just after 10 sessions, he's already up to 5.5. So that shows you how quick this program works. Teacher recommendations to identify ninth graders that were coming to our school that really had some deficits in math. So, uh, first of all, we identified those students, and then uh, we, through Jan uh, and the company that she has uh, identified as a very good research-based, uh, has a very good research-based product, used this Socrus West, uh, this is the company, Transitional Math, and we identified the materials we were going to use. Then, uh, training and observations, uh, I think one of the middle schools had, uh, was really uh, doing a little good job using it. So Mr. Holston was able to go and observe before he actually had to, uh, before he had students in his class. 
Uh, and then one of the things that uh, Ms. Jotomeo and Mr. Holston, uh, we've been real careful about doing is trying to keep parents in the loop. So parents were contacted so that they knew what was going on and, you know, why their kids were going to, we were suggesting moving them into this class. Um, we strongly suggested, however, we didn't uh, just move the student in there if the parent didn't want them to. We had them sign off just letting them know that we were providing this intervention uh, program. And if they chose not to be a part of it, that was fine. But we just wanted to have record that we did make it available. Uh, anyway, um, I want to say after we started this program uh, for the first quarter, and we this aligned with what our F's goal uh, stated, we are going to work uh, on our numeracy and literacy. We kind of we did a PDS, PDSA on it, and we saw that uh, there were other math students. We couldn't get them all in there because we just had one Mr. Holston, okay? And he teaches uh, five periods a day because he uses testing for the other one in his conference. So we decided that we needed something else. And so what we've been working on is uh, identifying more students to move into uh, what we're going to call success for math. Uh, and it has different leveling to it. There's an orange level, a purple level, a, a green level. Um, and I think, we'll go on to the next slide here in just a minute, uh, but first of all I do want to say through this PDSA we decided that we needed to identify more math students that we could put in intervention classes. So uh, we've done the algebra, the success for math that we're going to offer starting second semester and then also failing algebra one students. Uh, we have identified those students and we've been working through guidance on adjusting their schedule for second semester where they're going to get to go into the day cyber school. So, and these aren't just freshmen, these are uh, other 9th, 10th, uh, 11th graders also. Um, I wanted to read a little something that Mr. Holston had stated about his program and I think that's on this slide here. Uh, we've identified topics in math in which students have experienced gaps in their learning. We have a curriculum that addresses those specific topics. We are still working to improve our delivery system of opportunities for students to learn. This fall, we have had students engaged in learning in the areas in which they are deficit. There, have been pro uh, there has been progress in learning more for some students than others. We have had some students experience success in math who have not had ex that experience before. And I think that really echoes what uh, Ms. Jaramillo stated in her program. Um, on the next slide, this kind of gives you an idea of what we're doing now as part of our F's for second quarter. Um, we identified all the students that were in algebra readiness, which is basically our pre-algebra class, were tested. And based on their testing, determined uh, where their weaknesses were. And now for second semester, they're going to be placed in, uh, we're going to call it success for math G or success for math P or O for orange or A for algebra ready. And you can see kind of what they're going to be basically focusing on, whether they're in the G, P, O, or A. So the number sense, rational numbers, algebraic thinking, or pre-algebra preparation. Then, uh, for the group of students in algebra who are just not going to make it, uh, they've already failed the first semester, and so there's no hope if they stayed in there, we're giving them the opportunity to go into the day cyber school. And that's where, I think Mr. Hadamio mentioned, uh, we were able to hire Bobby Guthrie, and uh, he actually has a uh, certification in math, not in our state yet, but he's uh, working on that. And uh, these students have started coming in this week. He's working with them, kind of familiarizing them with the Plato program, and then they're really going to go uh, full force uh, when we get back to school.